Literacy, this is Miss Danis, and today we're going to be starting a new series called Artificial Identity, okay? And the series is basically about identity and belonging. Very important topics for high school students such as yourself, okay? So today we're going to hone in on being authentic, all right? And my thesis, I'm really excited about this actually because it's a good message no matter how old you are, but my thesis today or what I want to talk to you about is how your authenticity requires self-awareness, okay? So today, my objectives are we're going to define what authenticity is as a believer. Then we're going to outline how self-awareness is connected to authenticity as a believer. And then we're going to look at what the Bible says, okay? So before we get into it, I want you to take a look at this video. And when we talk about <clears throat> identity, see what you notice. All right, so I might have that video. If not, we keep going right here. Or should I just do it like we do have the video? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so guys, this is a video from a popular 90s sitcom called Family Matters. And if you saw on the video, Steve Urkel also has an alternate identity called Stefan. Now, how can we tell the difference between the two? Their morals and their values are different, right? Their actions align with their moral values. So Steve Urkel, nerdy, right? With the glasses, acting a little socially awkward. And Stefan is allegedly the smooth and sophisticated one. So when we talk about authenticity, guys, let's define it. And it involves being true to yourself and acting in ways that align with your values, beliefs, and personality, okay? So as a believer, we're going to define authenticity as having integrity of your faith. Ms. Danis, what does integrity mean? That means incorruptibility, okay? I'm going to stand on what I believe as a moral, and nothing can shake me, okay? And of course, we talked about faith before, right? That's trusting God through uncertainty with a confident expectation in his character and will. So when we have faith in God, our integrity in our faith is walking that out, right? James tells us that, <clears throat> our faith is dead without works. So we want to make sure that we're authentic as believers. Now, there's actually a scientist at Stanford, and he told us basically that there's a model of identity model of decision making. And what does that mean? That means based on who I believe I am, that impacts the decisions I make. So when I'm making a decision based on this identity model of decision making, I'm going to consider who am I? What kind of situation is this? And what would somebody like me do in the situation? Okay? So what does that mean for us as a believer? We're hidden in Christ and we reflect him. So that's who we are. This situation calls for us acting like Christ or obeying God. And that's promoting truthfulness, integrity, and a life that, re that reflects your faith. Okay? So when we talk about authenticity... Keeping it 100, not being a fraud. What they say, no cap? Is that the word? No you know, this is my young expert, okay? No cap. How do we have no cap on who we say that we are? Authenticity is the way. So three, two things that it does. First, it increases our value, okay? If I had a fake $100 bill, I'm going to be mad, right? We want to be able to authenticate. We want it to be real. When your boyfriend doesn't lie to you, that increases his value, right? <laughs> He's keeping it 100, amen, or girlfriend. Uh, when Jesus, <clears throat> so when Jesus comes back, he has the seal of the spirit in you. So when Jesus comes back, the way you are authenticated as a believer is the Holy Spirit. So authentic, authenticity increases value, but just like I was saying earlier, it requires validation. So how do we know that we're being authentic? That's where self-awareness comes in. So in order to validate our authenticity, are our actions aligning with our beliefs? Do we have integrity with our faith? Are we doing works based on our faith, right? We need to make sure it's validated. So how do you validate your boyfriend's actions? Um, maybe you stalk him on Instagram, right? Not appropriate, but it's an example of validation. Let's go to a, a child example. Uh, you have to show your proof of your work on your math exam, right? Absolutely. You got to validate things to make sure they're real. So when we're talking about our own authentication, we're talking about self-awareness. So when I describe self-awareness, I mean the capacity to observe yourself from a reflective standpoint, enabling better decision-making. 
So all of the time as a believer to make sure that I have integrity in my faith, I have to be self-aware. And that's not always easy for everyone to do, okay? There's two types of self-awareness, internal self-awareness, which is how clearly you understand your own values, right? So what does that mean? We have to know our word. We have to know who we stand for and what we stand for. External self-awareness is understanding how your actions, your word, your body language, the integrity portion of your faith, how that is interpreted by others. Now, that's a tricky thing. We've talked about this many times. Everyone has had a situation where their intentions were right, but it was perceived incorrectly. That would be an issue of your external self-awareness, okay? So let me get into the requirements for self-awareness as a believer. Number one, the Holy Spirit. Okay, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18 tells us, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. But we all, with unveiled faces, looking as a mirror at the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, okay? So like we've talked about in a, a few months ago, when we talked about sanctification, in order to be self-aware, to check our authenticity, the Holy Spirit's going to help us, all right? Number two, meditation and reflection on God's Word. 2 Timothy tells us that all scripture is inspired by God and beneficial for teaching, rebuke, correction, and training. Okay, so we want to make sure we meditate on God's word. Christ-centered community, 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. The Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, skillful in teaching, patient when wrong, with gentleness correcting those in opposition. You need to make sure you have believers around you so you can double check the authenticity, the integrity of your faith, for your external self-awareness, not your intention, but your actions. Christ-centered community is very important, okay? And the last one is super important. The ability to receive feedback, okay? It's not good enough to just have the community. You have to be able to eat what they say, okay? The truth hurts every time. One of my older friends told me last night that a hit dog will holler. <laughs> that's not too violent for you children but what i'm saying is when we hear the truth about ourselves you might get defensive right has someone told you the truth and you didn't know and you got defensive absolutely so when you feel your heart turning right maybe that's a sign that what feedback you're receiving from your christ-centered community is true okay so plainly how does we've talked about authenticity the integrity of our faith okay our faith aligning with our beliefs aligning with our actions how does self-awareness impact that? The ability to be aware of the things we think and do and how that affects other people. Number one, clarity of value and beliefs. When you're aware of what truly matters to you, it becomes easier to act in ways that reflect your authenticity, okay? So when I'm self-aware, I'm able to say, hey, God tells me to love my neighbors myself and I'm ready to possibly escalate the situation and be angry talk crazy to them. So instead of doing that, when I'm self-aware, I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to choose to consider them as more important than myself, like Philippians says, okay? Clarity of values and beliefs. Number two, recognition of inconsistencies. That's important, okay? You can ask some of my disciples. I say that I love them, but when they're frustrated or when they frustrate me, I might respond in a way that doesn't have seasoned words, okay? So when that happens... And it will, right? We all fall short. When that happens, because I'm self-aware through the Holy Spirit, my community, meditating on the word, I'm able to say, hey, right intention, wrong approach. Recognition of inconsistencies. How does self-awareness um, <clears throat> validate our authenticity? The fourth reason, I'm sorry, the third reason is alignment of actions with true self. Again, my true self is a Christ follower. Christ representer, my actions should reflect that. And at the smallest, simplest term, that's the new commandment, right? Loving the Lord God with all your heart and loving your neighbor as yourself. That principle alone should align all of your actions with your authentic believer self, okay? And the last part that self-awareness helps with the authenticity is better relationships, I know every single high school person on this call has a friend that's kind of fake. And you might be keeping them around for whatever reason, uh, people pleasing. That's not the sermon today. But what I'm saying is, is that you're going to have more high quality relationships when you know who you are, 
are comfortable in acting in that and you're not going to sway like James 1 8 says be a double-sided man unstable in your ways you're going to be able to be stable and even though not everyone will like you you will have quality relationships if you keep to that mold authenticity and being self-aware and staying true with your actions to what you believe okay so in summary, self-awareness helps us maintain our authenticity as a follower, an image bearer, and an ambas ambassador for Christ. Without the insight and understanding that self-awareness provides, there's no way for us to verify our authenticity, all right? If we're a $100 bill and we're not being self-aware, do they? Do you know about the marker? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Put it to light. Yes, man, God. Yeah, yeah. Well, I forgot. Back in the day, we didn't have that little strip on the $100 bill. You had to use that marker, right? We don't want the marker to show purple that we're fake, right? That would be the same as me saying I'm a Christ follower and cussing someone out, okay? Fake. We want to keep our authenticity by always being self-aware, all right? And without self-awareness, we've already discussed that it's easy to fall into patterns of behavior that are inauthentic, driven by external influences rather than the internal sense of self, okay? Guess who's involved in that? The devil. We have to bring him up every we have to bring him up every time because he's working, guys. And he's trying to convince you every day that God does not want the best for you, that you can't trust him, and that the devil has a quicker, better way. Okay? So when we talk about self-awareness, you know we're gonna do Bible study. I didn't forget, okay? So the scripture that we are going to exegese or break down, go through. All right, it's James chapter one, and I'm going to read verse 21 through 25, okay? Verse 21, therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness in humility, remember that, <clears throat> receive the word implanted. So we want to receive the word implanted in humility, which is able to save our souls. Verse 22, but prove yourself doers. Prove, folks. Prove yourself doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. Verse 23, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, my God. This man will be blessed in what he does. So what is James telling us, guys? We can't just hear the word and fake the funk. That is cap. Yes? Cap. I've said it 50, 11 times, okay? So practically, um, this is what James is telling us, guys. we got to make sure we have integrity and faith or authenticity. So I know you're looking at this guy that's sitting next to me that I should have introduced earlier. Yeah, go ahead and wave at the saints. Hello. Amen. Hello, global. <laughs> I'm going to see y'all one day, okay? And I'm going to keep talking to you like we're talking regularly. So this is Pastor Zay, Brother Zay, Isaiah. Mr. Zay, Isaiah. Isaiah. I'm Isaiah. Okay. Okay. So he is my panelist. Remember, I told you guys we're in the format uh, in my teaching of preaching one time and having a panel one time and having inductive Bible study every quarter. So today is the panel discussion. Like I told you guys before, if I have a panel on the weekend, I'm going to try to bring at least one guest in here today. So we are thankful for Mr. Isaiah, and he's about to really break this down for us. So my first question for you, sir, could you tell us how long you've been walking with Christ and on a scale from one to 10, how you rate yourself on self-awareness and authenticity as a Christ follower? Yes. Yeah, so once again, my name is Mr. Isaiah. I have been walking with Christ. Well, I grew up in the church, um, so that's a plus. But I've been walking with Christ on a personal scale for about two years now. Oh, I mean. Um, And then from a 1 to 10 on self-awareness, I would give myself about an 8. Um, it's almost to the point where I'm overly critical um, sometimes because I'm so aware of myself. But on an authenticity standpoint, I would say about a 6.8. 8, 6.8 or a 7. We, we, we'll, we'll put it in that area. Just because oh, uh, because of how overcritical I am, sometimes I can be too aware of myself. And because of that, I don't want others to judge me or things like that. So mm. I'll kind of not be all that God has called me to be because of that. So Oh, that's interesting. That was a deep answer. So, yes, yeah, self-awareness does need to be used um, appropriately, right? I think that's a great point. Self-awareness is always good. 
but grace is always abounding where sin is. All right. Excellent answer. Okay. Let's go to number two. Explain how understanding your authentic identity in Christ transformed the, transformed the way you view yourself and impacted the decisions that you made. Cool. So we'll start with decisions. Okay. Um, for me, once I started to walk with Christ and really understand, okay, this is, this, is, this takes work. Mm -hmm. um, it, I had to take some, I had to surrender a lot of things because of how aware I was of the calling that God had, had over my life or where he was taking me. So mm. um, let's go back to college. Okay. Right? Starting in college um, is when I really got serious with my walk. Um, and in that time, I was reading my Bible. I was on the way to traveling football games, reading my Bible. Mm -hmm. However, after the football game is over, I find myself at college parties and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so understanding that God was not present in those areas, I started to realize that I had to leave behind a lot of things. So the self-awareness of where God was calling me to caused me to say, you know what? I have to, if I'm going to say that I'm a believer, I'm a cross follower, I have to separate myself because that's what we're called to do. We're called to be set apart. And so yeah. that, that was one of the, the main decisions is walking away from a lot of things. And it may have hurt, but I had to walk away from those different things. That's so. excellent. That's a big deal, high school. Because it's difficult to walk away at any age, right? Yeah. And I think it's important that you said he was worried about his integrity and faith, right? Was what he's saying the same as what he's doing? And I like what you said because when you're new in the faith, it's different. And, and maybe you have been dabbling in the world. I definitely was. I had to remove myself from those friends for a time. Now, the Bible tells us that Jesus came for the sick and we have an expectation to recline with tax collectors or spread the gospel to people that are outside of the belief. Right. But you have to do that responsibly. If you're not strong enough to say no, go ahead and cut it out. OK. And if you think you're strong enough, test it in, a, in an area that will not be super um, difficult for you to do the right thing. But I think that's an excellent answer. Let's ask. One more, and then we'll go over self-awareness as a process. How do we practically do that, okay? So let me see. Question four, explain the internal tension that you faced when you allowed your decisions to be driven by society or culture rather than being driven by your alignment with your core beliefs as a believer. How did that inconsistency in your actions affect others around you? And how did it affect you? Um, that's a big one for me. Um, I will say the biggest thing that I noticed um, is that when my decisions was based off society or, and culture, um, I walked into a lot of dead ends, right? So when I first dropped out of college, I made the decision that I was going to start a brand. I was going to start a clothing brand. Okay. Um, and I noticed that was a decision based off culture. Culture was telling everyone, hey, let's make this, let's do this. Oh, so I decided, yeah, I decided to do that. Um, that was the first dead end that I found. Okay. And then from there, I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start making content, be an influencer. Um, what were you influencing? Jesus? No. I was trying, but I, I absolutely oh, nothing. Okay. At, at that time, absolutely nothing. Right? I didn't know. I just knew the the word influence, right? That's fair. Um, and so I, I ended up in both of those situations ended up in dead ends. And mm -hmm. I was, during that process, I started to notice that I was telling people, okay, this is what I'm going to do. God is telling me to do this, this, that, and the third. And when it's not happening, it's like, okay, I'm saying that God is telling me to do this, but it's not happening. I'm at a dead end. So now people are seeing that Ooh, I put God's name into this and it's not happening. So now I'm messing up God's name because the things I'm saying God caught me to are not happening. Oh, yeah. And so it, I was not only leading myself to dead ends, but I was also leading others to dead ends because my decisions weren't authentic. So That is an excellent answer. And I haven't heard him. That's why I'm so excited. <laughs> but that was a really good answer. Say, I think it's important that although we go by the new law, it's one of the top four that you don't use the Lord's name in vain. And that means, and, and that's something we do because we, when we don't know, right? But as I get older, I say, I think the Holy Spirit is telling me this, right? And then if it comes true, I can only confirm that it was God later on after it comes to pass. That's a very important thing. God never fails. Mm -hmm. He never comes back void. So if it does come back void, it may not be him. That is a great, great answer. Okay, guys. So we've hyped up self-awareness as it pertains to us being authentic. So you're like, Ms. Danis, what does self-awareness as a process look like? So these are the four steps that I have put together with ChatGBT also in the spirit. Amen. 
<laughs> Number one, understand your identity in Christ, okay? Galatians 2.20 and Colossians 3, 1 through 4 are my scripture bases on that, okay? So you need to understand that your identity is rooted in Christ, and that transforms not only how you view yourself and your God-given purpose, but how you view every creation that he made, okay? Understanding your identity in Christ is probably one of the most difficult things as a believer, as I think about my journey, right? I'm 38 today. I think I started going to this church and really have a relationship and understanding that at age 25. There are times, so what, 13 years ago? There's times in my life you can see by my actions that sometimes don't align with my beliefs that I don't understand my identity in Christ. It's not easy to grasp someone who would love you so much to die for you and someone who continues to love you the same way regardless of what you do to him, so much so that he has given you his identity and his cleanliness by Jesus' blood, right? We learned about that on Easter. So always, 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 when you're being self-aware, understand you are hidden in Christ, and that is your model. Number two, maintain a humble and realistic view of yourselves. Romans 12, 3, and 2 Corinthians 3, 1 through 6. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Renew your mind and have your actions pushed through that, okay? You have to recognize your gifts and limitations without pride. That's not easy for me to do, okay? Everybody struggles with pride. I love what Tony Evans said. Pride is like a beard. You have to shave it off every day. Every day we have to humble ourselves. Example, if you're getting angry or frustrated with someone, that's an opportunity to humble yourself, right? You've, you've probably done the same thing. You have had someone be angry at you, and that's what you would want them to do for you, okay? Always humble yourself. Number three, examine your heart. Psalm 139, um, 23 through 24, and 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Those are the scripture references. And examining your heart is simply being aware of your inner thoughts and motivations and asking God to reveal areas that need correction, okay? Talk to you guys that, about that before you, two, maybe two years ago, enemies of the heart, Am I feeling guilty? Am I feeling angry? Am I feeling greedy? Am I feeling jealous? Why? Ask God to tell you, right? The Holy Spirit will reveal to you what is in your heart and he'll clean it out, okay? And the fourth one, seek, receive, and apply feedback from Christ-centered community, all right? Proverbs 15, 31 and Proverbs 27, 17. You have to seek the feedback, right? You have to receive it. Just like James said, you have to hear the word and receive it, okay? And then you have to take that from Christ-centered community. Okay, so I'm going to run that down again. When we're talking about self-awareness as a practical process, the first thing we want to do and hold on to is to understand our identity in Christ. The second thing we want to do is maintain a humble and realistic view of ourselves as we do our self-awareness and validate our authenticity, okay? Number three, we want to examine our hearts. Make sure that there's nothing yucky in there that is not true, lovely, excellent, or worthy of praise, okay? That's Philippians 4. Fourth, seek, receive, and apply the feedback from Christ in our community. So, Zay, Brother Zay, if you could close us off with a little application, how has humility played a part in your personal journey of being more self-aware? Yes. Um, so just talking about like decisions and stuff, um, humility, like you said, is to have a low self-importance of yourself. Right. And so what I've had to do when it comes to my decision making process is I have to understand that we are called to walk in humility, meaning mm -hmm. that when I'm going through things, when I have to make the decisions to leave those friends and, and go and set myself apart or when I have to no longer watch certain things, I have to do it because it's not about me. It's about it's about God, right? It's about me becoming more like him and That's me good. making actions that are of him. So with that being said, although it may not be the best thing that I want to do, I have to do it because it's not about me. So um, I would say just understanding that has helped me um, a lot when it comes to um, being authentic and self-aware is understanding it's not about me. Yeah. It's not about me. Maybe that's a, that's a mic drop right there. Making sure it's not about you and you're considering the other person or Christ both as more important is the way to humility. God, I want to thank Brother Zay. He did an excellent job today, guys. We love speaking to you. 
Um, just remember, guys, we want to be authentic. We want to have integrity in our faith. That means what we say reflects in our actions. And how we validate our authenticity is self-awareness. All right? Understanding our identity in Christ, staying humble, monitoring our heart daily, and getting feedback from Christ in our community. So, Zay, would you pray us out? Yes, of course. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Um, Father God, we just come to you to just thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this opportunity to learn um, and just grow in our faith, God. We just ask that you would just continue um, just to allow us to continue to have an open mind and open heart when it comes to the things of your word, God. We just ask that as we leave here today, um, that we'll be able to be more self-aware and walk in authentic lives um, that glorify you, God. We thank you and we love you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.